Okay, hey y'all. We are going to do the next section, which is 10.5. Um, this is going to be like geometric applications. Uh, it's very similar to what we did before. It's gonna have the word problems. Um, but here we're gonna deal with um, a few different formulas. The majority of the problems, they give you the formulas. So it's just a matter of plugging in the certain variables. Um, I do not have my calculator near me. So what I'm gonna probably do is have it to where we can use the calculator right here whenever we need to, okay? So, click this again, maybe, there we go. I'm gonna hide this. Okay, so this first problem says to find the value of the remaining variable in the formula. That's technically saying to solve for the unknown variable, for the unknown value, and, um, as always, we will use 3.14 as an approximation for pi, which is that little symbol right there. It tells me that P equals 2L plus 2W. So that's literally saying that's our perimeter is going to equal 2L. Our L is length, so it's 2 times the length, and then plus 2W. W is our width. So we're going to add to that 2 times our width. So it tells me my L is 7 and my W is 6. So writing this formula, what I know is that I don't know my P, which is my perimeter. I do know, plugging this in, my length is 7. And then doing 2, my width is 6. So I would get P equals 2 times 7 is 14. Signs are the same, so it's positive. And then 2 times 6 is 12. Signs are the same, so it's positive. The perimeter of um, this rectangle, 14 plus 12 would be 26. And that would be my final answer. Um, I have that setting on a kin where it's going to square things for me. Uh, it literally gave us... A rectangle and this would be our length that would be our width the reason why our formula is two times the length two times the width is because we have two lengths and we have two widths but what you would see is just the one L and the one W that's why we're gonna go ahead and multiply both of those values by two though okay so this one tells me to use the formula and the values given to find the value of the remaining variable. That's saying solve for the variable that we don't know. Um, my A, do, 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 do. I wanna say, I wanna know for sure, I'm thinking trapezoid, but I, that might not even be right. Okay, so problem two here, um, it doesn't actually tell me what this formula is, so there's no reason to introduce it because it just gives us a formula and it's telling us to solve. We're literally just going to solve. Um, in my formula, I have A, and then I have equals, that's a one half, and then it says B, which is going to be my 21. This is all being multiplied, so I'm going to use my parentheses. And then that's times H, which is 12. I'm going to follow the order of operations, which means I would multiply um, a B21 H12. I just want to make sure I had everything correctly here. Um, I would multiply the first two things that I come across because we do our multiplication from left to right, and I would get that A equals, if in our calculator, that's not our calculator, if in our calculator we do, um, that is, that is going to be, I'm going to try to find a way, we would have 1 over 2 times 21 which gives us 10.5, correct? So I have 10.5 and then times 
our 12th. So 10.5 times our 12th, I get 126. I keep touching the wrong thing. 126. So this tells me that my A equals 126. Okay, so moving on to this problem. <clears throat> Find the value of the variable that is not given. Okay. So find the value of the variable that's not given. I notice that what I am given is my P, my A, and my C, correct? So writing this down, I would write 28 equals, my A is 13, it says plus B, I don't know what B is, plus C, which is 11. Okay, so if I add or combine the like terms on the right hand side, what I get is 13 plus 11 would be 24. And then I have my plus B because I haven't done anything to that. And then I need to <clears throat> solve for that variable. So what I would do is the inverse of a positive 24 would be a negative 24. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Um, if I do that subtraction, I get four equals those cancel B. So my answer would be 4 equals B, or B equals 4. Okay, so right here it says to find the value of T for the given values of D and R. So if you see D equals R times T, what that is is the distance formula. I notice that I'm given D and I'm given R. So just plugging everything in, I would get 260 equals, this is R times t, what I would do here is I would divide both sides by 50. Um, 50 goes into 104 times, so that should be 8. This is going to be 260 divided by 50. I got 5.2. And then those cancel, I get T. There's a possibility um, that a problem like this would ask us to round. The good thing about me having the answers up. <clears throat> um, it actually does say that we could type an integer or a decimal. So 5.2 would be your final answer. Um, and this is just saying that the time it would take to... Um, to drive that distance at our given rate would be five. So our distance say was 260 miles. Our rate, um, which is like how fast we're going would be 50 miles per hour. And we would need to drive that for 5.2 hours to be able to drive that distance of 260. So 5.2 is the answer. Now let's do this problem. It says the circumference of the circle. Um, the actual equation for the circumference of a circle, we would have C equals 2 pi R, which is 2 times pi times R. It wants us to solve for the missing variable. I notice that I'm given my C and I'm given my pi is 3.14. So my C is 7.63 equals 2 times pi, which is 3.14. I don't know my R. There we go. I don't know my R. So what we would do is you could actually multiply. What we need to do is multiply our 2.3. I'm sorry, our 2 times 3.14. So 2 times 3.14. It's going to give me 628. So what I get is 7.63 equals 6.2. 28R. Solving for R, I would divide by 6.28. Um, if you do 6, make sure I wrote these right, 6, 
7.63, 3.14, okay, <clears throat> 7.63, we're good. So 7.63 divided by 6.28, equals 1.21496815. This one will tell you to round. Um, I believe it might say to round to the nearest hundredths. So let's go and write down a few. That's 214968. Let's see what I did there. Those cancel and I get R. If you look at um, how to round, if it tells you to round to the hundredths place, what you do is the number next to it determines what that previous number does. If I'm rounding to the hundredths, the next number is four. Four tells me to stay. It's not the one's not going to become a two. Um, you don't necessarily go down because that would imply that that one becomes a zero, and that's not true. What happens is we would have 1.2, our 1 stays the same. If that 4 was a 5, then it would go up to the number 2. But because it's below 5, it's just going to stay at 1. Now, if you recall, I'm just going to delete that. If you recall, this is the tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and then it just keeps going on and on and on. Okay, so this is telling me that 1.21, that is my, that is my R. Okay, that, is, that would be the radius of that circle. Okay, so let's do one more and then I will start a different video. Let's find the area of this circle. Um, the area of the circle is A equals pi R, it should be pi R squared. Again, formatting with me, um, yeah, right here. I don't know, can, yeah, yeah, we could draw here. Right there, area equals pi r squared. Um, just trying to save a little bit of time, that's why I've been copying and pasting. But if you notice, can I touch in there? Can I get a text field? There we go, I wanna be right here. Let's go back, let's get to my r. Let's actually raise uh, right here. Let's raise that and square that, and then we are done. Let's touch out of it. Um, sometimes the formatting is just a little wonky. Um, okay, so A equals pi R squared is the area of a circle. Um, it tells me to find the value of A, so I can go ahead and write my A. I don't know my A equals pi is always 3.14 <clears throat> times my r which is 5 and it tells me to square that so i would have a equals 3.14 this is what i square and i have to do that first and so what i get is 5 squared is 25 go to your calculator 3 where are we 3.14 times 25 equals 78.5, and they actually do 5.0. Um, what we get is A – just kidding – did it close on me again? Yes, it did. So when you do the 3.14 times the 25, I got 78.5, and that's going to go right here. My A equals 78, very ugly, 0.5. I think they had a zero afterwards, which it's it's okay. Um, if there's a zero in front of the five, of course, that's five hundredths. That's not five tenths. So that that's necessary. <clears throat> but to add, you know, a meaningless amount of zeros behind the five, that that's not necessary. Okay, y'all. So whenever we come back, we will evaluate volume and do a simple interest problem, and we will do um, the perimeter of a rectangle.
um, we'll measure uh, both of, of these values right here. We'll actually find the measure of each of the angles. Um, and then we'll do these abstract problems solving for variables. I think that's it. That is it. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. And there we go. Okay, awesome. Thanks, y'all. If you have any questions, make sure you let me know, okay? Thanks. Bye.